time for AC. Clutch here for the compressor was not engaging, not activating. That's probably where our leak was. The roof is frustrating. AC compressor isn't coming on, guys. Hello, and welcome to Gearhead 704. I'm Matt, and we're finally done with show videos, or at least I am. I'm not sure where you guys are at and watching all the videos on the channel, but I'm finally back to actually working on my Fox bodies, although I had a ton of fun at Ford Takeover and, of course, Chocolate Fox. That was an awesome time, awesome time. In case you missed those videos, I have a couple playlists. Check them out on the channel. But what we are into today, guys, I'm back at Fox Mustang Restoration, Fox Resto. SSP is right here with Tiffany doing her usual sanding. She's made a lot of progress, actually. In case you guys haven't seen, Tiff, you're almost done with the roof. Is the roof on fire? <laughs> no, because you're using water. We don't need no water, or do you need water? <laughs> Wet sanding. The roof is frustrating. Yeah, the main thing we're gonna do today Tar Hill Fox. Oh, there's Matt. He's going to sneak up on me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going to do the AC today, uh, O-rings and stuff. Basically, AC hasn't been working. We tried to charge it. Didn't hold a charge. Matt's going to show me how to do that, and I'm going to take care of that today. So I have AC because it's hot, Matt. It's hot outside. It is hot. Yeah, yeah. So I need that AC before I go to Bleed Ford Blue Fest in June. In case you don't know, we took the engine out of this car. This engine that was in the car wasn't here anymore. We, we put the engine out of the coupe. Over there, just working on. That's what's in the car. When we did that, Matt, I think you mentioned to me we messed with some O-rings potentially, which I didn't realize that, but. Yeah, I went ahead and discharged the AC system because, you we know, we have one line coming in one side of the motor and the other coming in the other. So we discharged it. We pulled some lines loose to get everything out of the way for the removal of the engine. We did put it back together with the old O-rings and to no surprise, it was not holding any vacuum, which meant if we put pressure Freon in there, it wouldn't hold the Freon either. If it held before, which you said it did, it held before we took the lines off and not after, that means we just pinched one of the O-rings. So okay. I got you an O-ring kit. We which just, is really cheap, by the way. It wasn't much. Yeah, yeah. They're like, like 15, 15, bucks. 15 yeah. 20 bucks, somewhere around that range. It does all the O-rings on the AC system. But the quick disconnects will get two O-rings per, and you'll see it, and then the threaded ones will get one O-ring. You'll put dielectric grease on it, but basically we're just going to, all the areas to where something connects with an O-ring, we're just going to take that off, throw the old O-ring away, put a new O-ring on. Lube it up with some dielectric, snug it back up, and then after we do all the O-rings, we'll vacuum the system down, and if it holds a vacuum, then we'll put Freon in it. You're gonna take this nut off. You're gonna take this nut off. That will allow these hoses to come off. You'll replace those O-rings. And over here, we got, this is basically the same thing as the fuel injector rail. For the for disconnect. AC, for yep. the quick disconnects. So you got- I'm very familiar with one that. One of the cages there. So okay. I got the quick disconnect tools over there. So you'll do the same thing. You'll put it in there until the spring unlocks. You'll pull the line out. This one you'll have to use a pick because the O-ring kind of slides over a tube into a groove. You'll pick those out, slide the new O-rings on, dielectric, snap them back together. And then over here, you got a nut ferrule over here. So you'll have to use a wrench to make, take that one loose. You got a little clamp for your accumulator so you can move the accumulator. And then below to the bottom side of the evaporator, that's one of the quick disconnects. So you got a combination on the evaporator, just nut ferrules on the compressor and quick disconnects on the condenser. Okay. Yeah, and this is the compressor here. Yep. Okay. So guys, I've got my new O-rings here. Now I was talking to Matt a little more. Because the system was holding a charge before, I'm only gonna go ahead and replace the O-rings that we messed with last time. So that's gonna be mainly just these two guys here, right here. I'm gonna take those off. Might do this. Now I didn't disconnect these before, but they're really easy. So probably just go ahead and take care of those. The ones back there by the accumulator, those are a little bit more challenging. So I'm not gonna try those at first. We're gonna see what happens with just replacing the simple ones. Hopefully that'll fix it. If not, I'll do the rest. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead, jump to time lapse, do that, and you guys will know here shortly. Stop the time lapse, guys, because I think we found the culprit right here. Take a look at this O-ring. This was the one that came from this side, which I disconnected, but see how it's separating there? So it got pinched. That's probably where our leak was. Now, what I'm about to do before I replace these, I want to point this out. I'm gonna go ahead, get some paper towels and get up inside here and clean this stuff out because we don't want any contaminants in there. We want everything to seal properly. So I'm gonna do that, put my new O-rings on, use some dielectric grease, and then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten her up.
Guys, I, I'm sweating. I'm just trying, just trying to disconnect this quick disconnect tool, trying to use the tool rather, to get this AC line off and I compress it, it's fine, but I just can't seem to pry it out. So, I don't know. <laughs> I've been yanking on for a little bit. My neck's actually starting to hurt, so I'm gonna tag Matt in here. See if he can help me. Back to working on cars. Fun stuff, fun stuff. <laughs> All right, that was another technique thing. You saw Matt come in there in the time lapse, help me figure out how to actually use the proper technique. Same thing, guys, when I was trying to get this to go in. I was having trouble around the intake there. It's not a stock intake, obviously, so I was having to press down with one part but lift up with another. I actually went through two O-rings there. The third time's a charm, I guess, but over here, decided to go ahead and get into these as well since it was supposed to be easy to replace and however, it has not been. Hold on, let me get some light for you guys. There we go, there's some light. Yeah, to get these off with a quick disconnect tool, I needed to get on the other side. I need to get on the other side of the car right here. Go ahead and stick the tool in. I was trying to stick it in and pull back and the counter pressure wasn't working. So that was a little tip Matt gave me is just come in around the car on this side, stick it in with one hand and pull out at the same time. That worked well. So what I'm gonna do now here is get these old O-rings off. Got two connections here. Gonna go ahead and use the pick to do that. I've done that before on fuel lines. It's a little similar, my fuel lines. Yeah, these right here, had to do the same thing with the O-rings there, got those off. But gonna do that, put new ones on, dielectric grease, of course, and then connect those back. Connecting it back will be a lot easier. Okay, new O-rings are on along with generous amounts of dielectric grease. I bet it's gonna come off a lot easier next time it has to be done. Pretty easy to connect these up now. The new lines, are, or not new lines, but the AC lines. I'll just connect those right up. Then we're gonna actually try it out, see if it will hold vacuum. And if it does, time for AC, which would be great because I am sweating like a pig right now. <laughs> What we're ready to do now is test and see if it'll hold vacuum. Matt's just put some oil in his, what's that, a vacuum Yeah, it's my vac tube vacuum cleaner? Pump. Pump, there we go. Yeah. Pump, Ed, pump, Ed pump it up. <laughs> Fast and Furious. Never watched it. <laughs> we need to fix that. Matt's never seen Fast and Furious. <laughs> First three are only good, the rest mm. suck. I'm probably all right. But. <laughs> you want to vacuum down the system. Number one, by doing that, we're removing all air. We're also helping boil out any moisture or sucking any moisture or humidity that entered the system while the system was open. So that's always going to happen. So you want to do that. You don't want atmospheric air in there at all because the cooling of the AC system will not work properly. It will not be efficient. Process that accomplishes two things, removing moisture and removing air. And actually it'll accomplish three things. Once we put it under a vacuum, we can shut the valves off and we can watch the gauge. And if it doesn't lose any vacuum, then we also know that there's no leaks. Okay. If it does lose vacuum after we shut the pump off and close the, close the valves, that means we still have a leak yeah. somewhere. We in the got system. more work to do. Right. We'll have to find the leak and then probably right. replace more O-rings or maybe components. Right, and to find the leak at that point, we would actually have to put a little bit of Freon in there and then start hitting it with the sniffer. And the sniffer is like a sensor. It's got a little probe and senses Freon, it starts beeping. Oh, cool. uh, really fast to let you know that you got free on. But yeah, so we'll kick this on, turn the vacuum pump on. We'll turn the valves on and let it suck down. You usually want to let that go for about 20 minutes. All right. So guys, we'll do this for 20 minutes. You ready? One, 1,000, two, 1,000. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh... Matt, uh, the key here is that on your gauges, we stayed down here near zero. Yeah. Right? Yep. And so it helps vacuum. Well, it's actually, in, it's below zero. It's actually 30 inches of vacuum. Is it? It's basically... Inside that AC system is kind of like an outer space. There's no pressure, uh -huh. there's no air, there's nothing. It's vacuum. Is there a Starship Enterprise? Because it's outer space. Around there, huh? <laughs> we can't get in there to see. So, <laughs> anyway, sorry. Star Trek, Star Trek stuff. <laughs> and we shut the pump off and we closed the valves, disconnected the pump, and we are not losing vacuum, which means the system is sealed and we're good to put Freon in. And I'll actually put a little bit of oil into there and I'll just use the vacuum to suck the oil up into there. Yeah, that's the way you like to do it. I don't know if a lot of people do it that way, but you, you actually, he uses the vacuum to pull in the Freon, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Is that why you're supposed to do it? Is there any other way There's to do it? There's several different ways to okay. do it. They'll actually sell a charge canister for the intake tube or the intake hose. It would go between the manifold and the tube and it would be full of oil. This way when you cracked it, it would suck the oil in first. So it's kind of the same thing. Okay. Yeah. And Matt's got a blanket to in case we spill anything. Yeah. And this so, is R134 oil or what is it? Yeah, this is ester oil. This is the conversion oil. The R134A, your oil you're gonna use is ester oil. There is another one called PAG. PAG oil is for AC systems that were made from the factory of 134. PAG oil can't mix with the old R12 oil. That's why you can't use it. Ester oil will work with 134 and does not react to the oil that R12 uses, which is mm -hmm. called mineral oil. Which used to be in these cars, R12. Yeah, R12. This system's been replaced so much, there's probably not a trace of it in there, but if you were converting an original system, you would have mineral oil left in there, which is what R12 used, and so you would have to use ester. If you used PAG, which is also compatible with 134, then it would just gum up the system and you have to replace everything. You do a brand new system, you get eight ounces of ester oil. We know your system has already had oil in it, so I'm just gonna probably throw about three ounces in. Okay. And I'm just gonna watch the little meter here and just watch it drain down. And now it's just sucking the oil out of the bottle. So all I did is open the valve, and this will be the same hose we use to charge the Freon. So whenever the Freon goes in there, it will finish pushing the rest of the oil into the AC system. All right, now we're connecting our first can of Freon 134. So now, what we'll do is we use the pressure in the can. I'll go ahead and open up the low side all the way. Oh yeah, it shot right up mm -hmm. on the pressure. Okay. Now the pressure in the Freon can is pushing the Freon into the compressor. It's already pushed all the oil up through the hose, through the gauges, the other hose all the way into the compressor. And now we're just filling it up with Freon. So this pressure is only going to go so far at some point. We're going to have to uh, go ahead and start the vehicle, turn the AC on. The suction side of the compressor will actually start sucking it out of the can. And the reason that happens is because at some point, the pressure inside the can will equal the pressure inside the AC system. It'll you know, stop pulling at that point, right? It, it stops pushing it in. So we okay. have to mechanically pull it in. So another important thing, whenever you pump the oil in like that, the oil is going to be sitting in the AC compressor itself. If we were to go and start the car right now and start the AC compressor, it would hydro lock the AC compressor because there's nothing but oil in there. What you do is you just turn the compressor uh, clutch. So by turning this, you're actually pumping the oil out and mixing it up with the Freon so you don't hydro lock the compressor. Oh, nice. And just that little bit of manual turn will do that. Yeah, you want to go about 20, 30 times. Make sure everything's clear, which we are, and we need somebody to start the car and turn the AC on. All right, turn the AC on. Did you turn the AC on? Yeah, put on eight, max AC. Uh, AC compressor isn't coming on, guys. I don't know, we're gonna figure it out. The clutch here for the compressor was not engaging, not activating, even with the AC on. Matt was able to find out that it was uh, this, which is the switch over there that activates the clutch fan. So went ahead, changed it out. Luckily they had a part here at Fox Resto. So this has been changed out. I'm gonna reconnect this and it should come on now. Noah guys with the new connector doing the same thing. So like I said, this was still not turning the clutch on. Well, the reason why there wasn't enough Freon in the system, even though Matt's gauges were showing they were, there was barely any in there. And it's because these fittings here, they were not working. This is some aftermarket fittings and they weren't allowing any Freon to go inside the car. So got to go to the parts store. This is what it's like, guys. This is real life. I don't cut any of this stuff out. I just show you guys the problems we hit. Got to go to the parts store, get new fittings. Hopefully we can get this AC done. So I will be back here right after we have the new parts, just like that. And we're back. What I was talking about with the fittings, this guy and this guy right here, basically they were not allowing the Freon in. So this is one of the new parts we just got. This will go here, I believe. And we got another one in this box. So whoop, here we go. Gonna go ahead and remove these, replace those. And then hopefully after that, we'll be able to actually get Freon in the system and the compressor will turn on and all that stuff. So I'm gonna change these out and I'll catch up with you guys right after that. I wanna tell you why I didn't really like the old ones or why Matt was not a fan of them. The valve was actually a separate component. It's not integrated into the connector where the ones we just bought, it is. The valve here is integrated into the connector. So what we gotta do next is take it back down to vacuum, which Matt is, he's doing, get all the vacuum there and then try it again. So I'm not gonna make you guys see that. You've already seen that. We're gonna do that. And hopefully this time it'll come on. So let's find out.
Made a little progress this time, guys. Actually, with the new fittings, we heard the switch click. And Matt, you were telling me something about high side, low side. I don't think we really talked about that, but. You always charge from the charge hose, which is the yellow, to the low side of the system. Basically how I figured out what was going on that we had bad ports was that the low side had 90 PSI and it was basically holding pressure from the can to the yellow hose for the blue hose all the way to this, but it wasn't going into the car. The reason right. I knew it wasn't going into the car because before the high side was at zero. It was at zero, yeah. And this time, since it actually entered the system, it equally fills both high and low side when the car's not running. So now I know the system actually has Freon in it because I have pre equal pressure in both high and low side. Okay. And uh, before we thought maybe it was the switch, would it also show zero if it was the switch, I'm assuming? No. That was a quick test that I did as I unplugged the switch and I just jumped at it, the compressor came on. So I kind of jumped the gun there a little bit okay. on that one. Once that didn't fix it, it forced me to look a little further and then that's when we found okay. this. Okay, good news guys. Well, kind of good news. You might have saw in the time lapse there, Matt and I put on face shields. Uh, the hoses that we we're using to get the stuff in, Matt was kind of worried they were gonna blow out. So he's got to get some new ones on that. But anyway, it didn't blow out luckily, it didn't blow up in our faces, but it did fill it with three cans. Uh, compressor came on like it's supposed to. Everything is working now and now I have ice cold AC. So the big thing to remember here guys, the biggest kind of culprit we hit, besides O-rings, you know, O-ring blowout definitely caused the issue initially, but these two connectors, we were not getting any Freon into the system because just, you know, they were basically brand new, but they still weren't working. I forgot to mention that, that style, you know, where the valve is not made in part of it. I just spent money on it right in their brand new parts, but uh, it didn't work. So just be aware of that sometimes. Sometimes when you buy brand new parts, they don't always work. But that's it for this one. I got working AC. Hopefully some of this helps you guys at home as well. If you are also trying to fix your AC, the big thing, other thing I wanna mention is with the O-rings, dielectric grease, man. That makes that so much easier to get off later if you have to get back in there. So definitely don't forget your dielectric grease. But yeah, that's kind of it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And it's kind of more like another how-to. We do this from time to time, but I know I enjoyed it because now I'm gonna be cruising with some AC, or not just the top down in 90 degree weather. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're stopping in for the first time, please subscribe because I do upload two times a week, every Sunday and Wednesday. So you can count on that consistent content. We'll see you here next time on Gearhead 704. All right, got my new O-rings here, guys. Actually, huh? Oh yeah, sorry. it's all right. <laughs> I'm trying to record. I already started. I did. I said, I was said already. Right. Yeah, that's what you do on these videos. You're supposed to talk on these videos, Matt. Yeah, it's from all the exhaust. What? Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs>